All right, we're going to do this one chapter at a time. This is chapter 12, Kisakia Solis. Where should I begin? Venezuela is where I was born and where I lived until I was 12 years old. I was a very beautiful child, happy in every way. But when I was 12, my mother fell in love with a man from California. He asked her to marry him, so we moved to his home in Long Beach. It was an enormous house with a pool in the courtyard. I believe a famous architect has, had designed it. Hollywood Studios called us sometimes to see about using the house in a movie or for a commercial. It was very glamorous. I was content there for a while. My mother's new husband had a son, Scott, from a previous marriage who was two years older than me. Scott paid no attention to me in the beginning, but soon enough, as my body began to change and I grew into womanhood, he took another look. He was always walking in on me in the shower, claiming he didn't know where I was there, or I would catch him watching me while I tanned by the pool. I tried to ignore him when I could. I kept the door to my room locked. Scott and I were at the house one night. I was 16. It was a rainy evening. My mother and his father were out at dinner. I was in the kitchen getting a soda from the refrigerator when he came up from behind and kissed me. I remember very clearly he said, It's okay. We're not really brother and sister, so it's fine. But it wasn't fine with me. I tried to push him off, but he was stronger than me. I wasn't a prude. I had kissed boys before, but this was not what I wanted. He came at me again. He knocked me to the floor and climbed on top of me. He did unspeakable things, all against my will. I don't know why, but he thought he could do whatever he wanted. That's how boys are. Later, I told my mother what, had done, what he had done to me, but she didn't believe it. She accused me of trying to ruin things for her. She said, look at, the life, at this life they've given us. She warned me not to be ungrateful. Of course, I was only more upset after that, and I, and I felt I couldn't stay there in such proximity to Scott. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came for me again. I told my mother I was moving out. She didn't fight it. She didn't offer to go with me. I don't think she had even wanted a child. She had me as a result of a one-night stand. I was less important than the things she had now. A nice house, a diamond jewelry, expensive car, and a big refrigerator. It was a life she had always dreamed of. We were even citizens now, and in the United States, no less. I went to a shelter and told them that I was on my own. I lied and said my parents were both dead and that I had been fending for myself. I stayed with a girlfriend for a little while, too. I lived in her pool house for months, and her parents never even knew I was there. I missed my mother, but the truth was that I missed her even when we were together, so it was nothing new. As soon as I got my high school diploma, I left California. The girlfriend I had stayed with was going to college in New Jersey. Her parents had given her a car for graduation, so she was going to fill it with her belongings and drive across the country to her new school. She offered to take me with her. I stayed with her in her dorm for a while until I found a job waiting tables and saved enough money to live on my own. I met a certain man while I had that job. He used to sit at the, at the counter and order blueberry pie. He used to flirt with me sometimes. I tried to resist him. I was suspicious of men by then. I wanted nothing to do with them. But he was persistent, and he was kind, and he made me laugh. He started staying after the restaurant had closed, talking to me when I cleaned up. He used to walk me home when it was dark. He didn't know uh, what he was getting into with me, though. He never did anything wrong, but it was a struggle for me to be truly close to him. It was difficult because of my past to trust him. I pushed him away every time he came back to me. I pushed again until finally he left. But he's the father of my two boys, and I've gone out of my way to make sure that they turn out to be good and respectful. When they were in my house, they never laid a hand on a girl, never a kiss, nothing. I was very watchful. It is, it's possible they're the only good boys in the world. With the help of scholarships and financial aid, they're able to attend university. They're studying hard there. Now I receive money every month as part of, as part of my divorce settlement. So financially, I'm secure, but I also choose to volunteer my time on Mondays and Wednesdays at the hospital because I feel like I should do something positive with my time, something to help people. It's the least I can do. I have enough money that maybe I could live somewhere else, but my friends are here. 
Besides, my boys, my friends are all I have. Almost no one in my life knows now knows what I've been through, nor do I want them to know. Some things should be private. That's what I always say. Besides, I don't need anyone's pity. My life has been what it has been. It's not a wonderful story, but it's mine.